Etsy, and today I decided I'm going to do a tutorial video, because I've been getting in some requests of people saying they wanted me to do tutorial videos on my channel, so I decided I'm going to. Now, today what I have here, if you know, you read the title and you're looking at the screen right now, we're going to be talking about custom backgrounds. And now, one custom background in particular is what we're going to be using, and the one we're going to be using is in this level that I'm building this custom background where well, it's almost like a mountainous kind of a feel so i am be teaching you how to do that so first thing you're going to want to do is you know well we're going to get a custom song just to get those lines out the way i want to find something i like but yeah so now Every, first thing you want to do is turn all of your stuff to black. And your first five colors. Now I'm keeping color one open as white because I like to have that color one as white. So that way I have something to use as white space. Like if I want to make an object white, I just use color one for that. But yeah, turn your first like five or six colors into black. And then... Then what you do, well, I like it at slow speed when I'm doing this custom background. So now what you're going to do is you're going to grab a background trigger, put it a couple blocks in. I say about five or six. Then make that the color you want. We're going to try, um, let's try blue. No, purple, purple. I like purple way better. You're going to put it at around like... I like darker backgrounds if you don't know already, like if you're not able to tell in my other levels. I like darker backgrounds and such. See, that's about the color we want. You want your background either set to this one or this one. I like that one because it fades out. I think it looks a bit nicer than just the regular old flat background. So, we're going to put it at somewhere... Uh, I have the fade time set to 2. It's kind of just like your own personal preference. It doesn't really matter what you have the fade time set to. But it is important that all your color triggers are set to the fade, to the correct fade time. Now you want color 1 here. Now you're going to set color your first color, which is probably color 1 for most of you. But for me, it's color 2. You're going to set that trigger. We're going to set it to around here. And put blending on. Now we're going to go into the next key. And we're going to grab these blocks. These ramps here. And this is going to be the first part of that mountainous like feel. These are going to be the ones that are closest to you. And once you have that, you're going to want to loop them around. Almost like you're making the nine circles effect. But you're not. Once, Alright, once you have that, you assign it to a color. We're going to do color 2. And then you scale, which saves you much objects. Now you want free move and snap on. If you don't know what free move and snap are, I didn't even know what they were for a long time. Uh, I've re I recently, like a couple weeks ago, found out what they were. What they do is, like, free move makes it so, like, if I copy this, I'm able to move it wherever I want. Snap makes it so when I free move, it automatically locks into a block. So I find that more useful, because I like having everything on the block scale. Now you're going to want to, like, scale these at all different sizes and stuff. And just, like, make them all different sizes, mess around with them. Now once you think you got a big enough mountain range, I'm gonna keep going. Once you think you got a big enough mountain range, then what we're gonna do is add another layer in a, in a custom background or really any effect, a layer is basically like, it's where there's like, you add another layer to it, really. Oh man, I can't stand when this happens. 
All right. Well, I think that's good enough. Now, say you want more, but like like the what just happened right now, I wasn't able. I lost select of them. Just do this. Then copy. Move it over. And turn it. There. Now you have something different. That's how I always do it. Now see, that might look a bit ugly. So, you want it to be like kind of separated a bit. Yeah, see, that looks pretty good. That looks like a mountain range. Now, what I like to do is I like to delete all the unused blocks because that, that, that saves objects. And objects is always something you really want to save, especially if you're doing an effect or... Well, especially if you're doing an effect level. You really want to save as many objects as you can. Like right now, we only have 153 objects, which is good because like if I were to do this but I didn't scale it, I'd have at least double that. So it's that's why we scale. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to add another layer. So you're going to go to the next key. You're going to add a color trigger for your next open color. Mine is three. But what I like to do, because it's even better, is you take this, copy it, bring it down, add it to color three, and just make it a bit darker. Now we're going to go into key two, and we're going to take these ones and go like this. Go about three or four high would be good. After you build that, you're going to fill it in with these. Or another way you could do it if you don't want to do that is you can go like this. I like that way better, but you can do like this and kind of do it like how we did the other mountains. But I think that way looks better when you do it like that, with it filled in. I mean, it depends on what you're using it. Like, you can use these ramp things, like these mountains and other backgrounds. It's just, I like, it's this is actually a mountainous background. It's meant to be like a mountain range. Okay, so you want to add this to color three. Put free move snap on. Scale at all different sizes. Once you think you got a pretty big range, about as big as your actual stuff. Now you can move on to making the next layer. Now the next layer is kind of be the same thing, except it's going to be darker one. And also, another thing is it's going to be much bigger. Now what you want to do is you want to take the same blocks that we used, that we've been using this whole time, and you want to make them about five high. Around like four to five blocks high. Then fill that in. Okay, once you have this all filled in, and, alright, so once you have that all filled in, now what you want to do is you want to take it and assign it to color 4, and now scale all the way up. And then you copy that, move it over about to there. Alright, so now we have our groups, and this is what we should have right now. Now it looks nice, but it's not really a custom background yet, because backgrounds move slowly. So now, what we have to do is add groups. Now the grouping might seem a little complicated, but really it's easy. 
You take this and you add it to group 1 and group 2. You take this and you add this to group 1 and group 3. You take this and you add it to group 4 and group 1. Now what you want to do is you want to add move triggers a teeny bit past where it fades in. So like about... It's up to you where you want it to fade in. For me, I'd say like around right here. Um, you want group 1 to lock to player X for about as long as you want. I'm just going to put 10. Now what you want to do is you want group 2 to move at the same speed. But we weren't, we're going to put it at negative 100. Group 3 is in the background more, so you want it to go a little faster. So you want to put that at negative 125. And now group 4 is furthest back, so we're going to put it at negative 150. Now, you should have your custom background. Now see, it's following you, but at the same time, it's moving to the left. Now... What we're going to do is, now that we have this, we're going to focus on some, a little bit of gameplay and what blocks look nice with this. So, we're going to go into our next open key. And here's what I think looks the best with this background. When you take these, you take these blocks, and you put them like this. That goes out and you take this block put it there now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the detail to color 5 and then you're gonna put a color trigger for color 5 also another thing you might want to try because it, it looks nice is setting opacity here on it like because then, then it kind of works with the effect more so like this one will probably set to like opacity 85 this one, we're going to put 0.80. This one, we're going to put to 0.75. And now, color 5, you want to be the highest. So, we're going to put this one at 90. Well, at least, like, for most of you guys, color 4. So, now what we're going to do is... We're going to copy color 3. Ah, oh, dang it. No. Undo. <sighs> I messed that up. Well, we're going to copy that, move it down. Color 3, make it darker a bit. Now we want to copy that color and put it in here. So it should look like that. Now, you also, another thing, is put the object lines to white. Or you could put them to, like, gold, whatever your preference is. I like white. Now what you want to do is, now that you have that, you want to put these blocks like this, set them to the same color, and put them in. And it looks really nice. Well, for me, put them in like that. Now, after that, you can really just add whatever you want. So, yeah, so now you have your custom background with mountains in it that you can really just kind of use in whatever you want. So, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Comment down below if you want to see more of this. And if you do, what you'd like to see next. I have more custom backgrounds up my sleeve I can show you guys. I'll probably do a whole series on custom backgrounds if you want me to. And then just like put like different effects and stuff as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.